Hello and welcome to Switch Statements video tutorial. In this tutorial, we will cover switch statements in a menu-driven program. I realize there are many textbook definitions of switch statements out there, so in this video tutorial, I'm not going to bore you guys with another definition. Rather, I want to walk you all through a program to learn switch statement hands-on. Before we start, let's look at the syntax and the structure of a switch statement. As you can see, we start by switch and then your expression. Your expression here is the input from the user, which will be either an integer or a single character, unless you define your own expression. Uh, but let's not worry about that right now. Let's learn this before we do all the other fun stuff with it. Uh, and then it's following by uh, open curly braces, which signals the beginning of the switch statement block. All the switch statements will be within this block. Okay, so let's start by looking at this program. We're going to start with including our preprocessor directives up there, and then of course we're using a standard namespace. Moving down, um, int main, now I'm going to start by defining my variable choice. Now the definition of variable that I have, I decided that I want to use characters because I want my menu to have A, B, C. If my menu was going to have one, two, three, or the numbers, then I would put int choice. But in this case, I'm using char, int, char um, choice. And this is my menu. It's just a bunch of C out statements that's telling the user that if you choose A, then um, I'm going to show you the structure of a for loop. If you choose B, this program will add two numbers for you. If you choose C, the program is going to tell you if a number you're entering is odd or even. And if you choose D, then we're going to quit the program. And then a, a simple C out statement asking the user which one of these would you like to try. Now, right after this, you need to now get your keyboard ready to get input from the user because remember user is the one who's going to tell you which one of these they're going to be choosing. So depending on which one of these we have case statements for um, every individual item. So we're going to start by saying switch and the choice that we have gotten from the user is going to now be the one that we're going to use to see to, to find out which one of these um, cases we're going to go to and execute. Now, in this case, uh, we have case A, we have case B, case C, and case D. Now, one thing I want you guys to pay attention to is because I defined up there the choice to be a char or a character, I need to make sure that I put the single quote around A. Now, if you notice, I have lowercase a and uppercase a in here. This is what's called a fall-through program, which means that because I don't have no break in between, I'm pretty much tricking the system or the, the program to ignore the cases for me. So regardless of if the user inputs the capital A or lowercase a, they're going to get the same result. And that's my way of um, kind of like not limiting or telling the user what to input. Now, case A, the, it says that, you know, following is it's a simple print statement that's going to print that out. And then I have a break right after that. Again, if I don't have a break statement in here, the program is going to fall through and it's going to execute every single case after um, this particular case. Now, moving on to the next case, again, I'm having a lowercase and uppercase B in here. Um, now, I want to add two numbers. It, simply, I just write my definition of variables, in this case, A, B, and C. I ask the user to input two separate numbers. I get those two separate numbers from the user, C in A and B, and then I'll just calculate it, and then I'll just see out to a cout statement, I'll produce the result for the user to see. Again, I'm going to be using a break statement over here. Now, moving on to the next case, again, I'm using the same thing. I'm using uppercase and lowercase c. In this particular case, I'm telling the user whether a number is an even or odd, um, but I'm doing a little input validation in here that I want you guys to pay attention to. So I'm going to say int input. This is going to be a number that's user going to be inputting and for me to tell the user why this number is going to be odd or even. But what if the user inputs uh, letters? Or what if the user just hit the keyboard and some other characters um, started showing up? If I don't 
gracefully handle that, it's going to halt my program. To reduce that, to reduce that problem, I'm going to do a little input validation. I'm going to just flat out say, if it's not input, and by that it means that if it's not the type I'm asking right now, I'm asking for an integer. If not input, it's going to tell the, the user or the compiler that uh, if the input was not an integer, then simply we're going to send out C out statement to the user saying that enter an integer as an input. Else if the input, the number that the user inputted into the program, indeed was an integer, and if we mod that by 2 and the result is 0, then you have entered an even number. And that's because any number divided by 2, if it produces a remainder of 0, then we know it's an even number. Else, then this is an odd number. Again, right after my curly braces, I put this whole thing in a curly braces, which kind of like, you know, it's part of a convention, which I just want to have everything in a nice way and we can look at it. It's easy to read. And then after the block statements, I have a break, which I'm going to go to case D, which is quitting the program. And over here, I can simply just see out in a statement saying that you're now exiting the program and return zero within that case. And then, of course, I'm going to have a break statement after that with a default. Default is very important as well. In case if the user inputs something else, I'm, my menu is A, B, C, D. If the user inputs F or 3 or something else, the default statement is going to kick in and it's going to say this is an inbound choice. All right, now let's run this program and see what will be the output. F5, and here's the output. Um, of course, this is my menu. I'm going to start with an A, but I'm going to put lowercase a to see if my program is going to recognize lowercase. And it did, and the first choice, it did promise to print out the structure of for loop, and this is the structure of for loop. Let's run our program again, and this, why, this time we're going to choose B and see if our program is going to run correctly. It's asking me for two different numbers. I'm going to input two different numbers, and it's going to give me the output. I'm going to rerun the program again to test the uh, menu option, the third menu option, which is C. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little input, uh, input validation in here. I'm just going to type in some gibberish. And enter, and it's going to tell me, please enter the right information. Now let's run the program again, and in this case, I'm going to use C, please enter an integer number, so we can, the program can tell me if it's an even or odd, and sure enough, it's even, and then I'm going to run the program again one last time to check the last choice that we have, and that's to quit the program. I'm going to do capital D this time to see if it recognizes the uppercase as well, and it's going to tell me that you are now exceeding the program. One thing I want to mention before ending this video tutorial is that, did you happen to notice how we have to keep closing the console and rerunning the program to test our output for different menu options? It's very annoying, isn't it? That's because we don't have a loop in our program to give us the choice to choose another menu option. I didn't implement any loop in this video tutorial to reduce confusion. However, it's important to implement loops in menu-driven programs, and I will cover them on my next video. You may find it useful to subscribe to this channel so you can get notification for the next videos as well as having access to all the videos at all times. This concludes this video tutorial. Let me know if you find it useful and this video helped you understand the switch statement better.